In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. All right, Chaplain's Report today, and it is going to be a short one. I got to be honest, I never thought that I would be doing a Bible lesson dressed up as Deathstroke, but here we are. <laughs> Uh, Halloween does some weird things to people, I guess. Uh, but no, we, we actually do have a really good chaplain's report today. One of my favorite verses, I really do love this one, because it really does set the tone for the difference in those that have a godly worldview and those that do not. And I'm talking about something from the Book of Wisdom, Proverbs 9, 9 through 10. So we'll go ahead and we will read that right now. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase his learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Now, the truth is, even though these are two very short verses, you could do literally whole lessons on these two passages. And it would not be difficult because there is so much packed into such a small space. First of all, it points out that those that are truly wise and those that are knowledgeable are the people that have a thirst for knowledge. Because if you look at it, if you give instruction to a wise man, he will be wiser. Which would imply what? That if you give instruction to a foolish man, he will not. And this is something that is pointed out actually in other places in the Proverbs, that foolish people are ones that don't want to hear new instruction. They don't want to hear ideas. And that when you correct them or say that they're doing something wrong, they either lash back at you or ignore you completely. You see, to be truly wise people, we have to be open to suggestion. And one of the suggestions we have to be most open to is that Maybe we don't know any everything, and maybe we're wrong on some things. To be academically rigorous, we have to accept this. That we're all in development, that we're all in process, not a product. And that we're all still growing and trying to figure things out. That's what it means to be academically rigorous. And that's what it means, by the biblical definition, to be wise. And so in order to be wise, we have to constantly be looking for new information. And if we find instruction from people, the Bible says that wise people will be made wiser. And when we give instruction, because that's part of learning too, believe me, I learn a lot more when I teach a Bible class than I do when I am a part of a Bible class and am being taught by another person. When we are teaching another person, and we do need to do that from time to time, we need to recognize the wise from the foolish. That's not saying that we write people off and say, oh, that guy's not that smart, we shouldn't be teaching him. No, 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 we, we teach everybody. But we need to be looking out for those wise people that will be able to use the instruction to its fullest and appreciate them for who they are. And if we teach those who are wise and teach those who are righteous, they will increase in their learning. And this brings me to verse 10, the second part of this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. You notice the distinction there? Because it's not uncommon in books of poetry to play the synonym game, where they basically, just for emphasis, restate exactly the same thing twice, to sort of help get the idea across. And because it's done in poetic verse, this is something that shouldn't be, come as a surprise to us. I don't think that's what's going on here. I don't think that's what's going on here at all. Because if you'll notice in the first half of that verse, it says fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And then the second part, knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. 
You see, the difference is, one is the origin. And what is that origin? Fearing God. It's interesting that on this holiday where we, you know, talk about things that make us afraid or, or try to even dress up as things that are scary, and I know that it's all typically done in good fun, just like anything else, you can take it too far. But as a general rule, that's something that's done in good fun. There is such a thing as fear that is righteous. You know, an awful lot of people say, well, when the Bible says fear, what it really means is respect. No, it means fear. And if you're not afraid of God, you're a fool. I'm sorry. There's no nicer way to sugarcoat that. You know, a great way to describe it, I think, is uh, when the children in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe first hear that, who Aslan is. And they, they just hear a little bit about him. And then someone asks, well, is he safe? And Mr. Beaver is, is kind of chuckling about this. He's like, no, he's not safe. Did you not just hear what I said? He's a lion. Lions are not safe. Well, that's also true of God. The end part of that passage is, but he is good. God is not safe. I mean, yes, he can be safety to those that believe in him and love him, the Bible often describes him as a refuge, a cleft in the rock that we can hide to, a strong tower. All of those things are true. But we also have to remember that God is also a God of wrath and vengeance and punishment. And there is a natural, healthy dose of fear that goes along with doing that. God has often been described as a father. Don't tell me you weren't afraid of your father. I'm still afraid of my father. I mean, I love him, and I trust him, and I know that he'd never do anything intentionally to hurt me, but I'm still afraid of him. <laughs> There's still a rational and healthy dose of fear that goes into that relationship, because he is my father, he is my parent. And I believe that anything that he would do would be to my betterment. He would be doing so to try to make me better. But just like when I was a little kid, I was afraid of him whooping me. Or I was afraid of him taking away one of my favorite toys or, you know, punishing me in some other way. I'm still afraid of that aspect of God. I still trust him. I still love him. And I still know that any punishment he would delve out is done with the intention of making me better. But the point is that fear does not go away. And the Bible says that that fear is the beginning of wisdom. And then the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. See, the difference there is when we start coming to understanding and knowledge, that's the second level. That's the next step. Fear is where it all starts. Having that healthy fear that God is going to punish that we are trying to escape our own sinful lifestyles, that's the beginning. But once our spirits have matured, it should go beyond that. doesn't mean the fear isn't still there. That is still the beginning of wisdom. But we start coming to understand and know our parents. Isn't that exactly what it's like to be a little child? When you start out, you don't know your parents, and it's not your fault, it's not that you're not trying, but you can't really relate to them because you're a kid, you don't have a lot of life experience, you don't really see them as a real person yet, they're just a parent to you. When you start getting older, you start learning a little bit more about who they are, about their past, you start understanding why they do the things that they do. And because you have more knowledge, that trickles over into understanding of who they really are. It's the same thing with a Christian's journey. Sure, it usually starts out with a fear of God, but eventually that fear and wisdom gives way to knowledge of who God is, and with that knowledge comes understanding of why God is the way he is. We understand why he punishes. We understand why he rewards. We understand why he is able to love us enough, even while we were still sinners, to give his only son to die on a cross to save us. And that is understanding. Stay the course, friends. <laughs>
Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.